What is up, Nephilim? This is the Chig coming at you with another Diablo 4 build guide. Before we get started, go on that like button, hit that subscribe button. Today, we're going to be talking about the Twisting Blades Rogue. I'm making two versions of this video, one without uniques, one with the absolute best stuff you can have because they are vastly different. So, firstly, I have this setup, which is going to be starting out with no uniques. It's going to be getting us ready. It's going to be letting us start leveling things up. I've got all of my gear to plus eight. This is not as strong as some of the other builds, but it is pretty fun. And if you like Twisting Blades, I recommend you try this one out. So, Puncture. Enhanced Puncture, get some energy back. And then Fundamental Puncture, we like to get the vulnerable, helps us out doing big things so twisting blades you want to go five out of five here get as much on your gear as you can i don't have a ton on my gear like i said my gear is dog water we're going to be using enhancing twisting blades increases damage when returning and then improved twisting blades stays for 1.5 seconds when impaled with twisting blades this is just giving us instant cc when we use twisting blades going to use three and two sturdy getting Close damage reduction. We're going to use three into siphoning strikes, get a little bit of health back when we are in melee range. Using shadow step into enhanced shadow step to get a little bit of extra crit when we shadow step to something. And then we're using discipline shadow step to get the cooldown. We've got one point into cow traps, one point into enhanced cow traps, and one point into discipline cow traps. As you can see, I am stacking a lot of duration here. My multiplier goes up to 83% on this. We'll go over that on the gear in just a second. We've got one into rapid gan bits. Your evade cooldown is reduced whenever you daze an enemy. We are constantly dazing. We have trick attacks. When you critically strike a dazed enemy, they're knocked down. Constantly, constantly, constantly. Got five points into dash. You can move these points around, but I like to get the increased cooldown on this because we're zooming. We've got one point into... Enhanced dash to get us down to methodical dash. Dealing damage to crowd control enemies reduces the cooldown. We're always crowd controlling because that's what rouges do. You're going to put as many points as you can into Dark Shroud. Enhanced Dark Shroud to reduce the chance of it getting consumed. And then I have Subverting Dark Shroud because I like the move speed. You can put it into Enhanced Dark Shroud if you'd like to get the extra crit chance. Because actually I'm going to go ahead and do that because it's going to increase our DPS. I'll show you why in just a second. It's reducing your damage taken by 11.2 per stack. So we're going to grab three points in exploit to extra damage for healthy and injured enemies. Three points in the malice, extra damage to vulnerable enemies. These are incredible. We are going to go five out of five in poison imbuement because this is where all of our damage is coming from. We've got enhanced poison imbuement to increase its duration. And then we've got blended poison imbuement. Whenever you crit with a poison imbued skill, it does increase poison damage. So if we crit, we deal 75% increased damage, which is incredible. Got three points into deadly venom to increase our poisoning damage by 9%. Three points into frigid finesse. This is our bread and butter. Increase damage to shield enemies. Double that against frozen enemies. We have literal nothing in our ultimate skill tree. And we want to pop down to close quarters combat. This is how we are scaling the build as you can see my gear is not very good my damage to close is not good at all i'm at 68 percent on my other builds i'm over 100 this is not the best however you get your gear right you will be able to zoom through these things it is amazing all right paragon board as always do not copy paste our paragon boards get the paragons you need to help your build just activate the glyphs as you're going along all right so on the starter build we are going to be using versatility because we get increased damage and non-basic non-core skills deal increased damage so our non-basic non-core skill in this case is our poison imbuement first board we're going to grab exploit weakness we love this this increases our damage to vulnerable enemies stacks up to 25 percent here we're grabbing tracker, poisoning damage effects last 40% longer. This is just 40% more DPS. And then we get a little bit of extra damage per intelligence that is close. So we're at about 60% there. Then we're going to pop over here to the Eldritch Bounty Board. Whenever you activate your poison imbuement and you use it, you are going to be getting 20% increased damage from that skill. It's amazing. And then we're going to throw control here. You deal increased damage to chilled enemies. 
more to frozen enemies and then this is just giving us flat damage to crowd control enemies this is an amazing 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 thing for us to have then over here we're going to grab the no witness board we are not going to get no witness we're just using this to get to this glyph socket quickly we are throwing efficacy in here it gives us increased imbuement damage potency which is just giving us extra damage and then we're increasing our rare nodes, so you know we're getting a little extra damage here, getting a little extra life here, making everything good. Up here, we have the Cheap Shot node, which is amazing. We definitely want to grab this, increase damage for each nearby enemy that is crowd controlled up to 25%, which is amazing. We're always crowd controlling, and then we're throwing Exploit in here. Whenever we hit a mob, they are becoming vulnerable immediately, and then we deal increased damage to vulnerable enemies. We use this in basically everything. It's an amazing, amazing glyph. Then we are grabbing the Bane glyph in the Deadly Ambush thing here. As you can see, we do not have Deadly Ambush. We could get Deadly Ambush because we're using Caltrops, but we'd have to give up some other things. So we're grabbing Bane because we have a chance to get double damage on our poison. And then we're just getting flat increased poison damage. And then we've already talked about control. Now just bounding all this. All right, again, make sure you just activate your glyphs, get what you need. If you need more life, get more life. If you need more resistances, get more resistances. All right, let's talk about the gear. Firstly, your hat needs to not look like mine. If you're not using the Uber version, please try to get a hat that has increased levels of poison imbuement. I don't have one. This is what I have. Cooldown reduction and lucky hit chance. Womp womp for me. So you can use your tempers, you want to get one of the CCs, and dodge if you can afford it. If you cannot, get a resistance. We are using the concussive strikes here for days and increased damage to days. We're using Umbris on our chest to give us the free dark shrouds because we need free dark shrouds. As you can see, all of my gear, except for things I borrowed from other characters, is only level 8. Here I have energy per second, which is huge for this build. It helps us out a ton. Shadow resistance because I needed resistances. Dark shroud, dodge chance, chance to freeze. Great piece of gear. Here you want to have attack speed, critical strike chance, and twisting blades if you can get it. If not, attack speed and critical strike chance is huge. Also, levels to abilities is gigantic. Get that anytime you can. You want to make sure you roll damage to crowd control enemies and one of the CCs. We're using the Noxious Ice here. It's giving us increased damage from poison to chilled enemies and double it for frozen enemies. So this is all the time. Our pants, just go defensive on your pants. Get defenses where you can, what you need. And right now we're using the Might Rune to give basic skills, give us damage reduction because we're using Puncture every other attack. Then we're using the Shared Misery on the boots because we like to spread our CC. It makes clearing easier. Makes everything a little bit easier. Here you want to be defensive with move speed. If you can get it, get levels to dash. Because being able to dash more often is going to help you out. Because it's going to zoom, zoom around. Um, I gave up my pair of boots that have dash to make sure that I had two movement speed rolls. I am a glutton for movement speed. I'm using shared misery just to get everything around. So this is the item I borrowed from my other rogue. That's why this one is 12 of 12 and rolled better. So you want chance for puncture to cast twice and increase damage to crowd controlled enemies because we are crowd controlling like mad and we're stacking CQC, close quarters combat. So you want to make sure you get at least 59% roll and you crit it once to make sure you can get all the way up over 100%. Here we are using dex life damage because we are scaling our poison damage and we want to use the blade dancers to just get the orbit around us when we are doing our twisting blades then we are using the corruption aspect on our neck which is giving us increased damage against vulnerable enemies with our imbuement skills ideally yours would have like crit chance frigid finesse movement speed crit chance frigid finesse other dps thing like malice or exploit mine's not real good as you can see i don't even have a damage or crowd control role on this it's just damage now the big thing here woody joe was testing and found out that puncture resource generation will give you extra combo points which is insane 
So that's why we have this, because extra combo points are nuts. So we've been using that. It's been great. Love it. It's doing everything we needed to do. You'll see as we go through, we basically go puncture, twisting blades, puncture, twisting blades, puncture, twisting blades. And it's like two combo points, and then it's three, and then it's two, and then it's two, and then it's three. But you just alternate, and it helps out a ton. It's super good. Circle of Bursting Venoms, we're using the Poison Infused skill to have a chance to make the poison on the ground because this helps us keep up our Poison Imbue all the time. This is really good, really helpful. You want yours to look like this, Dex, Attack Speed, Crit Strike Chance. This is basically the best you could ask for. You want to make sure you get and crit on Poison Imbuement last for so many casts because we need to get our Poison Imbuement up as much as we can, so we're using it as much as we can. So... Priority number one. Priority number two is get damage to crowd controlled enemies because otherwise it's not going to be that strong and it's going to be a little rougher to get everything going. So here we're using the Band of Retribution. Um, Retribution is really good. As you can see, this also didn't roll crowd control. So this is another huge percentage that I'm missing. But this is what I've got. Poison Imbuement lasts for three cast. Attack speed, crit chance, dexterity. Excellent rolls there. And then we're using Retribution. You deal increased damage just done to knock down enemies. We love that. It's helping us out a ton. Weapon number one, Caltrips Duration, damage to crowd control enemies. And then you want to roll damage, maximum life, and dexterity. We're using the um, one I can never remember the name of, Inner Calm here. Because when we're fighting bosses, we're standing still. Sometimes we're standing still and we're fighting um, other mobs. Part of the thing with this build is your positioning. As you can see, when I'm going to be running through here, I'll talk about it a little bit. Your positioning is absolutely key in this build and it's going to make a huge difference and you'll see what i mean when i'm doing the gameplay you want the other one to look exactly the same um not real sure why i have unstable imbuements hold on i don't think that's what that's supposed to be let me double check no i think it's supposed to be pestilent points hold on let me fix that real quick. It is not supposed to be unstable imbuements. Unstable imbuements doesn't really do us a whole lot of good. Um, that's not where I needed to go. I think what happened was I had replaced my weapon and did not realize it. So there we go. All right, we're good to go. Cool. All right, so yeah, you want pestilent points. You want to make sure you're getting the extra poison imbues on your puncture because... Why not? It gives us a little extra damage. It gives us extra chance to get the poison on the ground. Makes everything good. So, as you can see, I have rubies in my gear. This is getting my HP up. My HP is at about 43,000. If you're not struggling to stay alive, you can put dex gems in here to get your DPS up. I have the damage over time gems in my weapons because we are leaning really hard into poison damage. And then I fixed my resistances, as you can see here. I am max on resistance and max on armor. I fix my resistances with my gems in my jewelry, as we do. All right, so let's hop into this. This one is an 81. The reason this one is an 81 is because this build is a little more, a little less forgiving than the other builds that we use, right? So we have to make sure we are not only getting our gear taken care of, but we want to make sure that we are doing everything we need to do to learn the positioning and stuff. I'm not incredibly good at this build yet, so that is why I am demonstrating on an 81 instead of something else, because I am just not the best at this. Um, but as you can see, I was talking about positioning. You want to make sure you are ducking and dodging around the outsides, um, dashing through to make sure your blades are hitting the enemies as you go past them. And this is going to allow you to kind of just keep rolling and not really worry about much. It's kind of the same as the Andes thing. After you hit them with the abilities, you're good to just run past because they are going to fall over from um, the poison afterwards. Um, but you got to make sure one of the things that I have trouble with is I'm so used to playing in melee range and not having to pay attention to my um, Dark Shroud stacks because I'm using the Andes build that I lose my Dark Shroud stacks and kind of get lost in the sauce. 
and then I get one tap. So that's one of the things I'm working on. As you can see, it's not super fast, but it's not super slow. Um, obviously, this will be a speed build once you get it put together correctly. This is a really fast build. Once you have everything put together and good to go, I'm still working on learning it for the most part because I haven't played this build in a very long time. And by in a very long time, I mean since the release of the game when this was the only thing that we had that was viable. So I'm still trying to get back into the swing of putting things where they need to go and popping around and dashing and CCing and all that. See, like right there, that's how you're supposed to do it, but that's not always how I do it because I struggle sometimes. So um, but once you get good with this build, you will be able to do it just as fast as the other builds that we have for the Rogue. You just have to do what you do and get good i guess um that's my problem right now is i'm still working on uh, my positioning and when to dash and when not to dash and when to shadow step and all that um but as you can see when you do it right you are zoom zoom zooming right like you don't have to worry about anything when you're doing it right but when you're not doing it right, as you saw a little bit ago in that first floor, like you just get ripping pepperoni and there's not a whole lot you can do about it. Um, so as you learn it, as you get your gear together, as you get everything where it's supposed to be, um, you are going to be able to just make this into one of your farming builds if you really enjoy the play style. I happen to really like the play style of this build. Um, I just... Um, I'm not the best at it, as you can tell here. Um, I'm still trying to figure out what I'm doing and still trying to uh, remember how to position properly and obviously making wrong turns in Albuquerque because we are not... Uh... Yeah, what did I do? Oh, okay, so I can go down over here. Yeah, see? Not even looking at the map. I am struggling, y'all. Um... But as you can see, the DPS is great. Um, you got to make sure you're keeping up your, well, everything. Um, it's the big thing. You got to make sure you're keeping up your poison imbue. You got to make sure you're keeping up your, I would make sure you're keeping up your shadow step so you can, you know, get out of dodge if you need to. But um, we're also dashing to reposition a lot. We're making sure that, See now, when you when you do it correctly, you I melted those mobs, right? Like it's it's just getting back into the swing of how this is supposed to work is the big thing for me, and it's um I'm not struggling, struggling, but I'm not you know not struggling, so it's like okay, uh, what are we doing here? Um, hello, you know, um, like right there. Um, had I played that properly, uh, those mobs would have ripped and pepperoni and I would have got out of dodge and I wouldn't have had to go back for them, right? And as far as the bosses, the, the boss fights on this are super easy. It's just like everything else we do. We want to keep our couch ups down. We want to make sure we are just stacking our CC and stuff. And then once he pops back up, I'm going to shadow step to him. I'm going to pop out and then you're going to alternate 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 and the boss is dead right like it's super easy super chill um once you get good at it you won't get as close to dying as i did i was kind of struggling but for the most part it's what you got it's not a bad build not hard to play um easy to learn hard to master but if you're still here thanks for hanging out make sure you hit that like button that subscribe button I'll catch you guys in the next build video.